I'm a singer and a voice teacher. I am a guide on your vocal journey. So if you have any questions about singing, you know I have a new show. It's called the Singwell Karaoke Show where I take questions. So contact me through my website, singwell.eu, and we'll make an appointment. You can ask me your question and you'll get free singing advice. But today we're not doing that. We are reacting and ranking the most underrated singers from the series Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, if, you know, if you don't know, it's a TV series, uh, which is also a musical. And I adore that program. I love a lot of things about it, especially the singers, because they don't compromise on the level of the singers. I'm telling you, I try to do top 10 of the singers from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I couldn't decide who is better than whom. I might be able in the future. Right now, it just seems that they're all so incredibly good. But there are some of the characters there who are very much, in my opinion, underrepresented. There's a lot of injustice, in my opinion, that has been done to these characters. And I would wish that they would have more songs, more solo songs specifically in the series. And we're gonna go from fifth place to first place. First place being the most underrated singer on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. So let's go. <laughs> we're gonna start with Naomi Bunch, no other than Rebecca Bunch's mother. She appears on the series only nine episodes. So she participated in four songs, two solos, and only one actually displays her vocal abilities. We're gonna listen to Where's the Bathroom? I'll tell you why I think she is so good. By the way, if there is any indication to the fact that you're good, is that she, I mean, she's on Broadway. Do you need anything more than that? She's on Broadway. Let's just, let's just go. Where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? I need to use the bathroom. Tell me that you have a bathroom in this hovel you call home. I don't know which was bumpy or the plane ride or the taxi. All these freeways are a nightmare. Where's my purse? I need my comb. By the way, you're looking healthy. And by healthy, I mean chunky. I don't mean that as an insult. I'm just stating it as fact. I see your eczema is back. <laughs> For me, what makes it so delicious is the fact that she is leading with the speaking. So she's really saying the lines as an actress and the melody is a side effect. And as someone who teaches speech level singing, I'm loving this. And the character itself gives the voice a little bit of strain and it's a little bit of um, something that I wouldn't like recommend doing, but it's a, like it's a byproduct of the way she sings the character and it's logical it gives all of them right vibes so i don't hate it <laughs> are you using the lotion that i sent you if you're not gonna use it i'll return it to the store god i give you everything and still you just want more 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 more, more. <laughs> Yeah, so for example, all this, uh, I wouldn't teach that. That chokes your voice. But this is exactly what the character is doing there. It's, it's completely appropriate. Think about it for a moment, crazy ex-girlfriend. This lady was on your show for nine episodes out of the 62. There is nobody who watched crazy ex-girlfriend who doesn't remember this character she is unforgettable she did her job so incredibly well with only nine episodes four songs two solo songs and one of them she's not really singing that's how good she is so you should have paid her more money let's just skip to the end <laughs> oh I wasted all the dough on Harvard and Yale for you to be living in a dump in nowhere USA Getting fatter by the minute on this greasy goyish food just put my luggage in my room Could I get a glass of water? Uh 
So she is getting so upset right now that she's starting to push. I don't know how she gets away with that. But the result is um, spectacular. She's like building up, building up, building up. And, and now. Back in a moment, I need to use the bathroom. Again! <laughs> that was Naomi Bunch or Tova Felcha or Felchu. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. But Tova is a master. So I think there was a little bit of a disservice done there. Moving on to fourth place. In the fourth place, I have for you Tim. I don't know if you guys remember Tim, but he's one of the lawyers in the firm. So for 22 episodes, participated in a couple of dozen songs, out of which he did two solos, and both of them are quite representative of his voice. So I'm glad that he got those two solos, but you will hear now that he is um, yeah, he's quite a good singer. So I think he could have used uh, a few more solos here and there. Wouldn't hurt anyone. So let's take a look. Such profound humiliation such all-consuming shame the buzzing from the bathroom has finally been explained that so the start is soft but solid again spoken and there's a nice little vibrato there not too much yeah, very nice. A little bit of airiness, but that's, you know, that's suitable. There was no electric toothbrush, no facial scrub device. And now I finally know the meaning of the words, Tim. That was nice. We used two different positions. Every other Sunday night All her writhing, moaning, sighing I thought I was doing it right but The reason I chose Tim as only the fourth place and not above is because I still, even though I think he sings really well he lacks this extra um, ooze of confidence that professionals have. He sounds a little bit like almost there. So Tim is good. Um, he's better than what he got, but um, he's not up there with the, the rest of them. And I'm just pointing out that now when he goes to the high notes, he flips, which is understandable. Um, and you might think that this is basically what he's capable of, right? But just you wait. As I drifted off to slumber, thinking I had brought her joy, she would slink off to that bathroom with that blasted plastic toy. Oh, the Cursed buzzing, that damn incessant hum. I mean, good for you, Michael McMillan. That's your name, by the way. That's his name. He showed us, yeah? He was like, oh, I can't reach the high note without going into falsetto. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> and then I add growling on top of that. Why not? Yeah, very good. I used to think I was a hero. Can't believe she didn't come. The twang, the twang there is so good. Yeah, so powerful. Tell me that she needed so much more than I. Now the buzzing from the bathroom Tell 
this life that we both live. This just sounds like Michael has this voice, and that voice is there no matter what. And even if sometimes it feels like there, I, I can't explain it. There's some kind of insecurity there. And by the way, that could also be on purpose because of the character that he's playing in the situation that the character is in. But ideally, I would not have that in the singing itself. But okay. Even though that sometimes appears, that insecurity, the voice is there to catch it. And when he goes soft or or powerful or whatever he does or the growling is there he has a good basis he has a good foundation to his voice and that's why i think he was underrated and we're gonna move on to jim uh who's played by bro mosley i really hope i'm saying that right i i don't know um, he was on the show for 19 episodes, also one of the lawyers in the firm. Uh, he sang seven songs, participated in seven songs, and only got one solo with sort of like a quarter solo of a few seconds when he sings uh, a phrase, which we're going to listen to together as well, because I just want you to get the idea of what good of a singer he is. So we're going to start with his solo, Don't Be a Lawyer, became very famous, which by the way, uh, gave him only the third place and not the second or the first place, because I think he's really, really good for only one solo. But because the solo became so famous and so many people have reacted to it, I think he got his attention at the end of the day. But let's just listen a little bit to Jim singing Don't Be a Lawyer. 20 years old, pretty smart kid, didn't know what I wanted to do. So I took the L set and then just like that got accepted at Glendale U. Everyone said it was a real safe bet, a prestigious and lucrative vocation. So I set out on a journey to become an attorney without a moment's hesitation. But here's some. So this is quite basic, not a very challenging melody there. I'm impressed by the solidness. I was talking before about how Tim had a solid foundation. This is not just the foundation. This is a ready voice. This voice is ready to go on stage anytime, anywhere. I'm already enjoying this. Like my voice geek is getting thrills. The advice I'm giving when it comes to deciding what to Quickest way to ruin your life, don't be a lawyer. Not worth it, it'll leave you dead inside. The job is inherently crappy, that's why you've never met a lawyer who's happy. It's a guaranteed soul destroyer. Don't be a lawyer. So whenever there is a chance, it happened in the in the last clip that I played more than in this one, but there comes a natural occurring vibrato. So he's not making it, he's not shaking his larynx to make a vibrato. It's just happening and it's usually very short because he's going with the style of the song which is not necessarily about giving that vibrato. Um, but yeah, every time he goes to up to a high note, it's very uh, steady, it's very free and it doesn't feel like it's high it's just so simple and so easy for him to give us the product and the, the melody does go all over the place in the chorus like a da, 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 da. Um, and it doesn't look like it bothers him at all he just does what he does and i know this is a clip and he recorded it in advance but you can hear it in the voice as well so, by the way, I was told that he uh, did this in one take. That's impressive if there was ever anything impressive. I really hold this guy in high esteem. If that was not enough for you, I want you to take a look at this. In one indescribable instant, 
The whole world falls away. Nope. <laughs> yeah, told you. He should have been on more songs because he can sing. You have someone who can sing. Why don't you let him sing? Sing some more, Jim. I mean, Pearl. Moving on to second place. Are you ready for this? I'm talking about Heather. Yes. Heather, played by Vela Lavo. She was on 44 episodes out of the 62. Couple of dozen songs. She had one and a half solos, so she had one solo song, which by the way, did not represent her voice at all. So that's a bummer. And then she had this half solo when she was doing half a song as a the reprise of, of don't sell it for me we're going to one of the live shows of crazy Ex girlfriend and you're just gonna hear her one sentence and then we're gonna also listen to her reprise so this is let's generalize about men Just in a few seconds, you show us what a badass you are. Do it again. So, we all know that Donald is, you know, a goddess. That does not surprise anyone, but I mean, what surprises me is that Vela can sing like this and then they don't give her more songs. Why not? I actually have an idea why they did that, which is the reason I put her in second place and not first place, because initially I thought she would be first place, the most underrated, but yeah, she's just extremely good. Let's listen to her prize for a moment. Don't settle for me. What? Come on, dude, don't settle for me. Trust me, I know guys, and that look in your eyes means you're in love. How do I choose the words to describe how much I love this? There is, there's theater in there, and there's music in there, and there's even a little bit of a dance in there. It's just uh, charisma off the charts. The voice is so good. It's so concentrated. She has twang on top of that. It's a little bit exaggerated, but it's because she is a millennial. And it's just so good. And the vibrato is just flowing out of there. And that belting high note, just exquisite. It was exquisite. It was so good. And a little bit of a maniera. Love! The spoken quality on it so good so good we've had some fun together hold on a second heather but i need like so much more i'm way too badass to be someone you settle for go see her the head voice was so round and pretty it was not too airy it was just <sighs> It did something to me and the contrast between the chest and the head was very satisfying here and there she's singing throughout the series and you can tell that she can sing and then you ask yourself why is she not more in the center the reason why I think and I heard her say that in an interview is that because she doesn't consider herself a singer and she even used the the phrasing i kind of wish i i didn't have to do that i don't understand vela why do you waste time on these thoughts you are so good you're up there with the rest of them you are you're just as good as rebecca and donna lynn and and um and gabrielle you are but if you don't think you are that's where the problem is so that's just too bad you, you led the way, maybe, but they followed you, and I, I'm, I'm not okay with that. They should have told you, no, you're good, sing some more. That's what I think they should have done. And now, we're moving up to 
the first place. And in the first place of the most underrated singer of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, we have White Josh, played by David Hall. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 33 episodes, he sang on only six songs and only one solo song. Show creators, what's up with that? David Hall is a Broadway star, I mean, You'll just, just listen to this. I mean, just, just. How dare you play with love? Have you no decency? Love is what created him and him and her and me. How dare you play with love? Is nothing sacred to you, lady sir? I think the word is just ma'am. Love is what unites me and you and him and her and him and him and me as well. If there is anything that tells you that someone is a great singer is when they sing this kind of intro, these kind of intros that are almost no, um, almost nothing going on in the melody and it's not challenging at all, but you can tell. There's gold in there. I can already tell. I don't know if you can tell, but you will be in just a moment. J-K-L-O-L. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Love's not a game. None of us would ever say love's a game. That would be bad, you can't be sure of. But I'm in the mood to wear this cool fedora. So, one of the things that bug me is that even in this song, the only song solo that David got, he doesn't sing the whole song solo. He sings like half of it, and then everybody like chimes in steals his uh, thunder. Not really, I mean, it's all played very beautifully. It's a great number, I love the song. I'm just saying, he has a golden voice. It's so rich, it's deep, it's bright. It's an incredible free vibrato. Everything about this voice is first class. And why is he not singing more, why? Let's listen a little bit more and then we'll move on to another performance of his. I really want to nail this in so you will understand why I'm so upset about this. Love's not a game. Love's not a game. That being said, let's make it rain. While Cupid flies in from above, the group mind has decided it's a bad to add here because it was a really short um, line where he sang solo and that's a little bit my point. Let's move on to his other performance so you will see why I adore David Hall so so much. This is an old video it's on YouTube 10-15 years ago and he's just singing live there. Bye. Audio is so bad here <laughs> and the video is bad too and still his voice is flawless and you can tell even though the audio sucks <sighs> Dynamic spectrum, vocal quality spectrum, agility, 
Of course, the vibrato that we discussed before is just perfect. It, this is a perfect performance. Yeah, and he has this nice Broadway ending when he starts with a straight tone and moves on to vibrato. Just great stuff, great stuff. And another thing, until he got this solo, we had to wait the entire show. This solo that we just watched before, that was on season four. That was the last season and relatively towards the end. So one of the best singers there did not get any solos, gets a solo only at the end. I mean, there is no reason. He, he has such great composure, control of everything that he does. He's a good dancer too. He's leading with the acting. Like his singing is perfect. I even remember Rachel Bloom saying about his audition. At one point I was listening to them talking about it, that he had a perfect audition and uh, he was auditioning for the role of Greg. And they saw, say, said something along the lines of, you were too hot to be Greg. <laughs> I mean, Daryl sings more often than why Josh. And Daryl sings great, but not as well as Josh. Sorry, Daryl, I love you. Anyway, I have a bonus singer for you <laughs> that I would put on the sixth place. So I'm going to give this to you. But in general, I'm just in interested uh, in knowing your opinion. Do you agree with me that those singers are underrated? Do you think I missed someone who's more underrated? And who do you think is the best singer of the series? Because I'm really struggling with this question. And let me know if you want to have a video about the best singers of the series. Let's move on to the bonus singer, number six, Dr. Akopian, played by uh, Michael Haya. She was on the show for 16 episodes out of the 62 and she had three songs and all solo. So that's why she did not make the top five. She did get her stage, relatively speaking, but when you see how good she is, I think you might agree with me that she could have had more stage, more singing stage on the show. So let's check it out. It's happening. Maybe this time it's finally happening. Session is gonna be different. It's gonna be so different. I know this patient won't be indifferent. This time around, she'll want to grow. I've been this out of this world voice is soulful and meaty and a little bit a little bit dirty yeah i think soulful is the best word because it goes right into right in here let's keep going and so many times by the girl who's committed so many burn crimes yet i never lost hope or endurance thank god i don't accept health insurance <laughs> i charge 250 dollars an hour now this session is gonna be useful if she's truthful about how she feels so i'll give it my all with my requisite therapy show Kiss my fancy degrees on the wall for good luck That it's gonna be different I can help her be different Sweet Jesus, it has to be different <sighs> mm. So there was kind of a raspiness and almost a little bit of a eh, Like lack of freedom in the voice at the beginning 
and still with that it sounded so good and so rich but now when she went to the to the higher notes first time she did that the rasp was still there and then the other times it was just free it was just oh this is a consuming kind of high note when you hear it and you go like oh almost lose your uh, almost lost my balance there and then she did that three times she belts higher than, than, than a lot of people. That's like on the high side, very impressive singer. Very, very impressive singer. So she only had three songs and all of them solos. So I think that's good intentions. I appreciate that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad if she had more. I know that you can't do it all. I know that if you had dozens of incredible singers on your show. I know that. And I know you can like bring all kinds of excuses, but I mean, at the end of the day, those singers deserved more and they didn't get it. And I still love the show and I hope they come back. And there you go. That's all I have to say about that. And I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy singing.